right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, Stephen here with uh, Bread Breakers. Don't forget to check us out, breadbreakers.com. Follow us on Facebook. Uh, subscribe to uh, this channel for more videos, more teaching, and all kinds of stuff that we do. Um, <clears throat> just wanted to do a little change of location here and try something out kind of new. Uh, there's probably a little bit of ambient noise going on. I see that there's a couple of neighbors who have chosen to pick like 2 o'clock in the afternoon to mow their lawns. I'm not really sure what that's all about. But uh, anyway, today I want to discuss um, attitude. And attitude is something that we really need to get in check if we want to be effective disciples of Jesus Christ and we want to make disciples, uh, which of course is the commission of Jesus Christ. So we should all want to be both disciples and making disciples. But uh, Zig Ziglar, there's a, there's a saying that he, uh, I guess he put it together, he's kind of famous for it. It says um, that it's attitude, not aptitude, that determines your altitude. Now that, you know, it all sounds cool, right? Because they all end with tude, right? Kind of rhymes. But if you think about it, it is kind of true, right? Your attitude, not your aptitude or your abilities, determine how high you can really achieve or attain. Now, this, this is in the business world, so um, obviously he's applying it more to personal success, personal growth, things like that. And it is true if you think about it. Abe Lincoln said that we can either complain that rose bushes have thorns or we can, we can rejoice or be happy that thorn bushes have roses, right? It's all in our perception. It's a kind of our attitude of approaching things. Obviously, a pessimist is going to be, oh, you know, I love roses, but oh, there's thorns. Whereas an optimist is going to say, uh, well, a, a true optimist is going to be like, hey, I don't even, what, what thorns? Just go, go for it. But obviously, you get the point. So what does this have to do with us, with our lives, with Scripture, uh, with living for God, with, with making disciples? Well, part of the fruit of the Spirit, uh, joy is one of the fruits of the Spirit, and so is uh, self-control. And both of these things have to do with your attitude, how you approach a situation. You know, if we're, if we're, if we're going through something, there's some wind picking up, so that might come into the, uh, the microphone. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Testing this thing out. But uh, anyway, so uh, where was I? Yeah, fruit of the Spirit. You have joy and you have self-control. We need self-control, right? Self-control is kind of, you know, it, 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 we need it. We, we got to have self-control. Um, you're not really an effective believer, disciple, or certainly not a disciple maker without self-control. And that is where you get your attitude under control. You get yourself aligned, under control, under the unction of the Holy Spirit, rather than just the whims of the human nature. And when, when you approach a situation, you're disappointed, things like that. I mean, we all make mistakes. Uh, what John said is that if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And if we sin, that's self-control, right? We're supposed to have self-control, not give into our human nature, and not sin. Well, in our attitude, there are many sins that we can commit in our attitude. Things like anger, wrath, uh, really even bitterness, and some of these things can stem from our attitude, our outlook. So that's why I think uh, Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, I think it's verse 8, where he said that, you know, whatever's good and honest and true and lovely, and good report, if there's virtue in it, if there's praiseworthiness, if there's praise in it, think on these things. What's he saying? Even if your situation is, is rough and tough, and if you think about it, Paul is writing from a, from a jail cell, and he's saying, you know, in the book of Philippians over and over, you know, uh, rejoice, <laughs> and, you know, and things like this. And what's he, what's he saying at the end there in, in chapter 4? Listen. You choose what your attitude is going to be like. You can choose what to think on, and that's what we should do. We need to think on the things that are good. And so we need to get our attitude in check, get our attitude under control. I encourage you to do so because you will live a much fuller life, and you will be a much greater disciple if you will get your attitude, and I will get my attitude in check. So let's do that with the power of the Holy Spirit. Love you guys. God bless, and we'll see you on the next round.